our college prep 101. It's basically just trying to take a little bite out of the huge puzzle of college acceptance and search and try to tackle this. So these um, lovely reps have uh, given us a, you know, a couple of hours of their time to drive time and all that to help us plan um, a good college visit, which I know a lot of people will be doing either on their spring break or this summer. So um, I'm just going to give them a chance. I know we still have some people trickling in, but just uh, let them introduce themselves and tell them just a little bit about themselves. And then we're going to go back through and they're going to give us some top tips of what we need to keep in mind as we're planning. And then we'll open it up for questions. So I'm Stephanie Greer. I went to UT and, and I graduated in 1999 and I uh, majored in regional and consumer science and business and I'm a professional volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon everyone. My name is Stacy Hall. I am the regional recruitment manager with the University of Alabama. We're located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I am personally regionally located here, so I live out on Old Hickory Lake, so not too far. Uh, definitely the local person to contact if you ever have any questions about Alabama. This is my 12th season recruiting with Alabama, um, and all have happened here in Middle Tennessee, and Williamson County has been very good to us, so excited to be here today to share a little bit of knowledge with you guys. Hello, my name is Rachel Newman, and I am the Regional Admissions Counselor for UT Knoxville. Um, so I also live here in Middle Tennessee, on the West End. Um, I stare at the competition of Vanderbilt all the time, trying to like film out. Um, and I graduated from UT in May of 2021 and studied hospitality and tourism, and then have been in this role ever since. So about two years now, um, and we're working with students and families here. So nice to meet everyone. Hi everybody, my name is Allie Eason. I'm the admissions counselor from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Um, I am over the entire state of Tennessee, so um, I do spend a lot of time in the national area, but um, if you can't see my face, you can certainly reach me over email and by the phone. Um, I also went to UAH. Um, I graduated in 2020, so I have been in this role for about three years now, and I've been working with the state of Tennessee for about a year. Um, and I got my degree in marketing, and I am currently earning my master's in supply chain management from UAH as well. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah Barrero, and I am with Tennessee Tech University. We're located in Cookville, Tennessee, about an hour and a half east of here, um, on the way to Knoxville. And uh, I'm also a regional admissions counselor, so I live here in Franklin, and um, I, this is my home. I actually graduated from Brown High School in 2014. Uh, and then I went to Tennessee Tech, graduated there in 2018 with a bachelor's in Spanish and a bachelor's in psychology. Uh, and then in 2021, I graduated with my uh, master's in psychology as well. So uh, I work with Middle Tennessee, just like these lovely folks. Um, I, it always kind of surprises me. Like, we all know each other. We're all friends. <laughs> Sometimes people are like, oh, it's your competition. Like, no, these are our people. Uh, but anyway, I feel really passionate about college affordability. I was a debt-free student. And um, I really love to help students, help parents um, figure out like, the best fit for them and the things that, that make the most financial sense for their families. So, uh, yeah, glad to be here. Thanks, guys, for being here this morning. I uh, hope you guys are doing all right. My name is Morgan Terry. I'm from Western Kentucky University. Uh, I'm a native of the area. My mom actually taught at Franklin High for 30 years. I was actually a college counselor there as well. I'm so very familiar with folks all across here in Williamson County. Uh, graduate of UKU, I double majored in economics uh, and political science, and I also earned my master's in business uh, at WKU. I've been in this role for a minute. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many years, four or five, something like that. Um, and while I used to cover the whole state of Tennessee, I'm now actually regionally based here in Nashville. So I live in Sylvan Park. Um, it's easy for me to get anywhere. So if any of you guys have any questions for me, I'm easy to get a hold of. But thanks again for being here. Hello everyone, my name is Jules and I am from Middle Tennessee State University. This is my first trial season, so I'm really getting my foot in the door with all of my schools. Um, I work with Williamson County, Cannon County, and then the rest of South Central Tennessee. So two totally demographic, different demographics, but they're very fun to work with and I've loved my time in Williamson County. I also am an alma mater of the place that I work. So I graduated actually in August from MTSU 
with a degree in child development, family services, and a minor in leadership, and now I am continuing that education it, with my EDS in school counseling as well. So really love the atmosphere. I love working with students, and I really loved working with counselors, and um, I really hope that I can share the great things that a you has for your students. Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Butler. I am a regional admission counselor for Stanford University in Birmingham, Alabama. I actually live in Owensville. We've been in Williamson County since 1992, so I've been here for a very long time. Um, I did not graduate from Stanford. I graduated from Michigan State University of very first Chicago with a bachelor's degree in communications, and I'm currently uh, will graduate with a master's of studying law with a higher education concentration in April. Um, I my passion is to help those students from high school to college uh, it's a huge transition one of the biggest transitions of the rise mm -hmm. and coming alongside families and having them look at is something that i love to do so Hey everybody, my name is Shemessa Wine, and I represent the University of Mississippi or commonly known as Wholeness. I'm also regional, so I live about 45 minutes west of here, born and raised, so I'm very familiar with the area and able to kind of come out whenever I need to. Um, I actually graduated from Austin Peay State University in May of 21 with a health and human performance degree to go exercise science and pre-occupational therapy, completely changed life goals, and then graduated my master's degree in August in higher education administration. So again, just happy to be here and answer any of questions. I guess so. Now, I was really looking forward to that. Like, I was filled on here with my microwave, microwave, microwave. And I kind of spend it for our lovely theater people, and it would help them tremendously if you don't use the microphone. If we turn this off, then we won't have an interference. And although Ella is killing it, uh, <laughs> it would be best if we go ahead and do that. So, um, if y'all want to start, so we're going to do this. Maybe you want to just start gearing and give your talk tips. All right. If y'all want to struggle in, so everyone can do and I was at the Preds game last night, so I apologize if I've lost my voice a little bit. We went into overtime shootout. It was a big deal. So uh, we were screaming and hollering for the Preds. So very excited that they won. Uh, some of the tips that I would definitely give you guys if you are looking to plan that perfect campus visit, the first thing is going to be to plan in advance. Um, the big deal is that most of our tours are going to be some type of either bus tour or <laughs> Um, potentially a walking tour where you're going to have a tour guide that is projecting and speaking to you. We do have limits on the number of students and families that we can have in a campus tour. All of us, many times this week, we'll get that phone call from a parent, can you squeeze me in? Well, no, because we're going to be taking away from the experience of other people that have already booked their campus tour. Um, if you have a bus tour, you can only have as many reservations as you have seats on the bus. So again, we definitely want to plan in advance because we want to give you the best experience possible. The other part about planning in advance is that we are working with a bunch of new new parks. So not only our student ambassadors that give the tours, the bus drivers that drive you safely around campus every day, but then also our campus partners. So if you want to meet with someone from engineering or nursing, you know, they're teaching classes during the day, so they have certain hours that they can meet with families. So if we plan in advance, we can work with their schedule to give you the best day possible. So we're really looking for that experience, but give us just a little bit of time so we can book that best experience for you. Yes, I definitely would echo everything that Stacy said. I feel like all of our tips are probably gonna like blend in and apply. Um, for everyone, but one of my biggest tips when you're doing college visits um, is definitely give yourself the whole day, if not, depending on how far you're traveling, maybe a day after. I think that so much of the college tour is also looking at the city, like your, your kids are going to live there for like four years, ideally. And so look up where like the closest grocery store is, figure that out, be like, oh, here's the Kroger you can go to. Or, oh, like let's visit a local coffee shop and just and kind of give yourself that chance to immerse yourself in the city. I feel like sometimes the city can be telling of the environment. You know, you might be able to connect with someone at a restaurant and be like, oh, like do you, what do you think about having 
Alabama or UT Knoxville so close? Like, what's the student experience like? Because uh, you're going to run into so many people, whatever city you're in. I, the school is not here today, but I very vividly recall uh, when I did a college visit with, with, with my dad, and we stopped at the Chick fil A in town uh, before the visit. It's like a 9 a.m. visit, you know, somewhere in there. It's like 8 a.m. And we were the only people at the Chick fil A. And I remember sitting there and I was like, damn. Nobody else is here. Like, don't you think that's a red flag? Um, he was like, stop being so dramatic. Like, it's really not that serious. But um, I think that you can just tell a lot about the environment of the school. Because, I mean, they're going to run around town there, too, and not just be, like, on campus all the time. And so give them a chance to look at the suburbs and what's nearby and be like, oh, look, like, you could come out to this shopping mall or something. You know, you do want to have a well-rounded experience. So I would check out the whole city as well. So that was also great. I will also echo that <laughs> and build on that a little bit. I would be also ready for information, right? Like you're going to get a lot of information thrown at you throughout the day, depending on you're just coming for a tour. If you're going to, you know, meet with College of Engineering or the College of Nursing, if you're going to talk to a student rep, you know, depending on what you have to do, um, bring something to write with. Um, I know that we give students writing materials, um, and of course the parents ask, we give them writing materials as well, but everyone likes to take notes their own way. So, you know, bring something to write with, and just be ready for a lot of information. Um, it's gonna, sometimes it's gonna be a lot thrown at you. And so write down what you wanna know prior, you know, and was that covered? If it isn't, I know on the tours, you're always gonna meet with an admissions counselor, um, whoever's in the office that day, to kind of wrap your day up. Um, And so I think that's really like kind of getting your mind in that frame. Also realize kind of the time of year you're wanting to come. If you want to see the hustle and bustle students on the campus, fall is going to be great. You know, fall, spring, um, definitely look out for those the, like spring break dates because if you come during spring break, you know, the campus is going to be empty. Um, but, you know, if you come in the summer, that's going to be, you know, students aren't necessarily on campus during the summer. We do have some students on campus, but classes aren't active. And so, um, you know, if you're wanting to see a, a busy campus, summer might not be the time to come and visit. So I would definitely tailor that to what works for uh, the parent and student schedule, but also kind of the experience you're wanting as well. No, that's great. I would also, along with like uh, absorbing a lot of information because it can kind of feel like drinking from a, a, a fire hose, I would also not leave campus until all of your questions are answered. I think that's super, super important. Um, I have a younger brother who's a senior in high school right now doing college tours, and I'm, I'm hearing him, like, and even my dad, who's done lots of college tours at this point, there's lots of kids in my family, um, you know, kind of dismiss some, some college visits that they've done without getting all of their questions answered. And so, you know, give the college a chance, give the university a chance to answer all of your questions. Um, but each of our campus visits are going to be structured differently, and you're gonna get a, just a different glimpse of the campuses. So if you really liked that you were at one school and they talked a lot about living on campus, and then you go to another one, and it's like, we're gonna really talk about living on campus. That's not necessarily a negative thing, it just might not be built into what they do. So, you know, go to the Office of Residential Life, ask to speak to somebody, you know, get all of those questions answered. Uh, and just a word of encouragement I would give to all of you is that we don't expect you to know anything about college, okay? So sometimes parents will be a little bit um, maybe um, trepidatious or embarrassed about asking certain questions um, because they think that maybe higher education is a little bit more elitist than it really is. But, uh, you know, admissions representatives, we're, we're hired to be the people who are supposed to be the easiest to talk to. Uh, so don't at all at any point in time feel like uh, there is something that you're expected to know. Uh, also because all of our policies are really different, right? So like some colleges are going to offer you a, a scholarship package and you'll know all at once how many scholarships you'll get. Some colleges offer rolling scholarships. Like we all do things differently. So ask all of those questions. There is seriously never a dumb question. Um, and I would really encourage you to not go home, not leave campus if you have any question about academic programs, living on campus, getting involved, financial aid, you know, um, ROTC, any of those things that your student might be interested in. Um, stay as long as it takes uh, for you to feel really sure about, um, about how you would pursue to feel about your college visit experience.
Definitely echo everything she just said. Um, we are professionals in rejection. Uh, we deal with uh, confusion, frustration, all that on a daily basis. There is no question that you can ask us that we have not answered a million times. Uh, I usually get, you know, especially from you know new moms, new dads who are nervous about, you know, they're, hey, my son's and my daughter's a junior this year. They'll send me a paragraph saying how much they don't know anything, and it's like. It's okay. You don't need to stress about it. Trust us. All of us here want your children to go to our schools. We're not going to be upset if they don't. So don't ever be shy with anybody in the admissions process at all. And really that leads to my, my biggest tip to anybody taking a tour is to ask the questions to a student tour guide. Uh, here, everybody here on this panel, we can all give you, you know, the perfectly manicured, you know, it's gone through five different levels of revision and eight different committees to what we put out for our marketing materials, our PR stuff, all of that. When you go to a college that has a student tour guide, nine times out of 10, that student is very excited about their university and is an extrovert and wants to talk about the experience that they're having here. That's why they took that position on campus. It's not just because of the money, which may be great, but it's because of the opportunity to be able to interact and talk about what they're passionate about. So they will give you the real deal information and they will not filter themselves and they will let you know about, hey, this is what campus is like during the week. Hey, this is a school where people go home on the weekend. Hey, this is a school where people don't go home on the weekend. Social stuff that you're not really gonna find online, you can always easily find, you know, GPA requirements, ACT stuff, all of that's gonna be pretty easy to find. But for the real information about what it's like to actually be living somewhere for the next four years, you really want to ask that student. So if you are in a tour with a student tour guide, again, don't be shy. They'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Definitely, and I want to take just a little bit of a turn too, um, because I agree with everything that has been said because I think it's so important. But I also want to include, to give your student the power to find out information, to make the decisions, and to ask the questions themselves. I think that something that we see so often is parents that are very helpful and want to make sure that things are done correctly and we appreciate things to being done correctly, but the students that fill out their application, that know that they're going on a tour, that know a general gist of what's happening or what the university is like, we see them soar and do so much better in the admissions process than students whose parents maybe have filled out the application, that have asked all the questions, those students have no idea really what has happened during that process. And so we do love the parents that are plugged in, but I think that it is really important to give your child a leg to stand on in the way of prompting the questions, giving them the ideas, hey, maybe you should ask your admissions counselor about this. Hey, have you thought about this? Because Everyone's situation is different. Everybody's going to have something different. Some people's parents help them with housing. Some people don't. Some people support them during their college experience. Some don't. It is completely different. So you do have to make sure that you are tailoring what your family is going to do for that student for their needs. But I, I truly do see a complete difference in students that have done it, that their parents have been there with them, and have made sure that they've gotten all the things done correctly than the students that have no idea that they've applied. And we, we run into that um, at MTSU. It, it happens, and I'm sure it happens everywhere, that some students are like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, my parent has done everything. And again, we do love parents that are plugged in. I have a great example of a mom who, she contacted me and she was like, I'm so sorry. Let me tell you I'm sorry. I was like, hey, I don't know what you're apologizing for, <laughs> but it's fine. Whatever it is, is fine. She said, you know, I have let my son do as much as I felt like he could do, and I prompted him to take this in his own hands, and I don't feel like he's finished it, so I'm going to come behind him and make sure everything's done. Can we talk about a few things? And I was like, yes, of course. Let's talk about it. We'll check housing, we'll do financial aid, we'll talk about meal plans. I will answer all the questions, but because she had let her student come forward and do it first, I feel like he has a sense of ownership over his experience. And I think that it helps the parent feel a little bit more like, okay, they can do this. Because once they do get to college, 
there are so many things that will restrict you from being able to talk to their professors, to talk to financial aid, to do those things that they, got, they have to figure it out. They have to start now, and now is a really great time to have those training wheels on for you to be there and help them, but let them do it on their own, in a sense. So. Um, just to piggyback on what he said, um, talk to the tour guides, but also talk to students who are walking by. Talk to somebody who is not a tour guide that lives on the campus, that experiences the campus. Also too, I highly encourage an overnight visit, scheduling, um, attending a class, meeting with faculty one-on-one. -on -one. Your student has over 4,000 universities across the nation to pick from. And it's very important for you to find that right fit for your student, one that meets your family financially, academically, socially. I encourage students as well when they come to campus to have three questions that you want answered that are important to you at any university. So, uh, and as you, whether it be a post-it note, a spreadsheet, whatever it is that your student, how they help keep them organized to make sure that they are um, listing the things that they are important to you. We are very fortunate to live in an area where you are within driving distance some, with some really great universities. Go to all of them. You may not know that you would like that university unless you walk on campus. So visit as many schools as you can, tailor that visit, give yourself time. Do not call us on your way home from spring break and ask us, can we come for a tour today, meet with a counselor and um, attend a class. We will do our best to accommodate you, but like Stacy said, plan. Plan your visits. And I know that your kids are very, very busy and their schedules are jam-packed, but utilize what you have and go to as many schools as you can and ask the questions. Um, like Sarah said, we none of us want you to walk away from our university with any unanswered questions. And utilize your admission counselors. I mean, all of us here, we live here. We want to take your student to coffee. We want to meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, get to know them, and help them find you know, what the right fit is for them. We hope it's our schools, but if it's not, that's okay, and you can tell us no. We only cry a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, being down here on the end, I'm gonna kind of take everything that everybody said and kind of collectively say it again. Uh, but definitely start early. You know, don't you know, come home off of spring break and say, I want to stop in for a tour on the way home and expect a whole planned out event kind of thing. Definitely start early. At least with us at Ole Miss, you can reach out and say, hey, I would love to see the Department of Biology while I'm on campus or the Department of Business and actually have those kind of specialized tours with some of those professors that oh, your, your child might yeah. actually have a it's class there next year. So definitely start planning early. Try and get in with some of those different departments. And big recommendation that I have is take two tours. And when I say two tours, I don't mean two fully um, planned out tours. Take your normal campus tour that's scheduled by the university, that's put on by the university, but then the following day, walk around campus in your own tour. You know, kind of let your child soak everything in by themselves. Take them into the buildings. You know, on most college campuses, unless it's a weekend, the doors are gonna be unlocked in a building. Not saying go say hey to the chancellor on every university, but I mean go in, kind of explore, walk around campus, see if they feel like they could walk around campus every Monday through Friday for the next four years. See if this is a place where they actually want to be at, want to live in, um, and take them around town, you know. Let your child drive around town because they're going to be the ones driving in the town for the next four years. If they don't feel comfortable trying to merge, you know, on the interstate, then, you know, maybe that's not going to be the right fit for them because they may be like, I'm never coming home. So just kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, just kind of allow them to kind of have some of those experiences um, and really kind of get in to the feeling of going to college, um, but make sure they kind of fit in where they're going. And you wonder what a piggyback off of anything 
I would definitely highlight the two visits, or take like two tours, whether they're back to back or you come in the fall and do a general tour and then go to admitted student day in the spring. Come to campus twice. If you're genuinely, like seriously considering attending that school, you could still be making your decisions, that's totally fine. Come and see the campus again. Uh, because it really, I think, an introductory tour is going to be a lot different than I've been to campus, I've seen this, this isn't new to me, I want to you know, talk to engineering, I want to go to, I want to attend a class, I want to go to Admitted Students Day, um, come to Admitted Students Day, um, you know, and go to those events, you know, and come and see campus, because I think sometimes if that really is what makes or breaks somebody's decision, is really getting in there and seeing the campus one last time. And kind of off of that, one thing that I, I regularly get from parents kind of going back to the discussion of, hey, can I come, I know I'm calling you last minute, is even if the school is not able to accommodate you for that, still go and do an unofficial tour yourself and walk around campus. Here at Western, we don't use, you know, if the student did an official tour as part of our admissions process. Some schools do. I know a lot of schools uh, may not uh, anymore, but still take a picture of yourself and send that to your admissions counselor saying, hey, listen, I, I know I wasn't able to get there for an official tour. I hope to be able to do that soon. But just showing them that you are interested in campus and being there, even if you're not getting that official tour led by a current student, you still might be able to sort of pick up on things yourself and just see, you know, if I can actually envision myself at this school. So even if it is unofficial, even if you are driving somewhere, oh, let's see if we can stop by this school. If they still don't do it, or they still can't accommodate you, still, still go walk around, enjoy your time on campus, and just let admissions know that you were there and you hope to be there in an official capacity soon. Yes, okay. And I, this may be an obvious thing, but I do think it's important to say, please make sure that your student is applying to more than one school and is visiting more than one campus. Even if you think, oh, I maybe I'm interested in Ole Miss, but it is it is so far away. I'm just I just won't even worry about it. Please go visit. Please have that experience because it may be the dream school for them. And I think that it's important to have multiple options and just to see, oh, I can do this and I can do this and I think that it is also important as well when you're visiting a campus to understand that it is very highly possible that your student is going to change their major and so to go to a school for one major and not have any other backup plans and not feel comfortable with anything else that is offered on that campus can be really difficult and I think that it does kind of alleviate the need of a transfer sometimes if you know well they have a really great business college and they have a really great medical program and they have a really great this and that and i'm interested in all of these facets and i love campus so this is a great place for me to apply as well because if this doesn't work out i also have this option and so i think that's something that i would really encourage students to think about as well in the process I have one last thing. Um, some of the schools here do local events. They come to the come to the national area and do events. Take advantage of those as well. It strikes me how personal you all are with all of our students, and I'm really overwhelmed for all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so I assume I'll, so I'll I'll kick off the questions here. I assume that if you want to have an experience where you're going in and sitting in on a class or something, that's not something that you go through the link on your websites to set up a college visit. That's a conversation that they have right. directly with y'all. Right, right. Yeah, reach out right, reach out to us. If, if the colleges that you have interest in do visits at your school, if they're going to attend the college fair that will be held here, what, next month? And or it's on the 8th. The 8th. And so um, get, get these business cards. You know, that's what we're here for. Reach out to us. Let us know, hey, I'm going to be on campus in three weeks. Here are my interests. What can we do for an itinerary for the day? That's where we can help you. Anyone can go out on a website and book a campus tour. So you can kind of see the days that are gonna be busy versus days that are still available. Cause typically anything that's gonna book the quickest will be those campus tours on that um, open website. But so you see, hey, March 25th is available. Um, Stacy, I'd like to come down and maybe meet with someone from engineering, possibly Greek life and um, study abroad maybe Honors College, and then I can check in with those different campus partners to see what their availability is, work those meetings around your tour, so it's kind of like a cruise, you know, you just show up, <laughs> and everything's sort of done for you, so, so we, we want to do that, but yes, reach out to us, 
Um, if there is not a recruiter who maybe lives here or visits here often, there is likely something on the admissions page that shows uh, this person covers this region or this state. I would reach out to that person first. I will say it does depend on the school, you know, because some schools will have you connect with the visit office to make sure that you get it all lined up perfectly because they have, you know, the professor's master calendar over there that I don't, I don't check all the professor's calendars, you know. And so it just depends. But I think starting with the admissions rep is a great start because they, all of us are absolutely here to connect you wherever direction you need to go or answer your question. So just to follow up, two weeks from today, um, we will have our college fair here in the Campbell Center. We have probably, what is it, about 40 mm -hmm. colleges um, that have RSVP'd so far. So um, parents are welcome to attend. Um, but yeah, so make sure that's on your calendar and you're, you're talking to your kids about it. Just want to open it up. Does anyone have any questions? So my question is for Rachel. Obviously, a lot of kids from Williamson County, in particular, from Burwood High, end up at UT. Um, so a couple questions. One is, it seems like in the last couple of years, that there's been a significant increase in young kids enrolled. So your population has kind of been there for a while. Where are you hearing that is housing is an issue, a big issue trying to get housing. So there's that question of, are y'all going to start Reducing that isn't going to stay that large. Additionally, it seems like a lot more out-of-state kids are being admitted to UT. Um, I don't know the exact percentage, but it was pretty shocking. So are Tennessee kids competing with all out-of-state, or is a certain number of Tennessee kids being admitted at like held spots versus out-of-state? Does that make sense? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, for UT Knoxville in particular, we will be enrolling a smaller class this upcoming fall, and I think that will probably be the trend this fall and then I can't really speak to the plan for next year to be honest after that um, and so that is recognized. I know my sister's a current student at UT and so I asked her I was like is housing real or is it like just fake news out there um, and, and like you know the rumors um, and so I will say you know she she did mention she was like you know students the kids just enroll like get excited about where they're going to live next year and they all sign their housing contracts in October don't panic about it you just need to work on applying like we're you know but first year students at UT are um, guaranteed housing on campus so they will have a place to sleep. We will not admit a student without giving them a bed, absolutely, um, that first year. So the class will be smaller. And then as far as, I mean, each of us, you know, college admissions is growing. Um, for UT Knoxville in particular, I can only speak to us, but um, although we do have more out-of-state students applying, we are the flagship and we will prioritize in-state students. Um, that's not to say that the competition isn't steeper. Like, we, there are a lot of really great applicants out there, 100%. However, we will always, for UT Knoxville in particular, have more in-state students on campus than out-of-state students on campus. I have a question for any parents that might have older kids. What is the number of excused school, um, school days that we can use for college visits? Does anyone know that? I think it's two. 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 So those that we want to go in the fall when the kids are there. And there's Those none as a junior, right? Early, I think it's one per semester senior, senior, senior year, right? One per semester senior year. Oh, okay. And then junior year? Junior. I don't think so, but I, listen, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you... I'm I, sure I will get that answer for us. Yeah. We do provide uh, documentation that you are on campus. Like so if your school will excuse an absence, even if it's not like an official day, you know, um, I know we will provide to that student was. Yeah, use up those days too. Don't let those go to waste. Those are, those are valuable days. Check to, sorry. <laughs> Check to see what events are being offered as well. Um, I know UAH, our campus tours are Monday through Friday, but we do Saturday events multiple times throughout the semester. So um, in the fall, I think we do three in the spring. I think we do, um, we do one in the spring for prospective students, one for admitted students, and then in the summer we do one for prospective as well. Um, so we have like five or six, give or take, year round that we will host on Saturdays. So if it's not possible for you to come up during the week, we can get you in on a Saturday and have you come and see campus. We'll make a day in. Take advantage of preview days. I mean, a lot of these schools all have preview days. Like we have a junior preview day. And that's, that's what I was going to say as well as we have preview days on Saturdays that departments are going to be there, uh, different offices on campuses will be there to speak with your students. We have presentations available for parents and students. 
and that's really important. And then also we offer Saturday tours as well for if you can't make it to a preview day, you can't use a visit up, you can come on a tour on a Saturday and it's just like the tour that you would get during the week. Would each of you mind to say if you have a preview day this spring on your schedule, would you mind email it to me and I'll make sure that I will also say if you are interested in a junior preview day or junior fall days, get those scheduled early because a lot of times they fill up very quickly with those being on Saturdays just because it's more convenient in a lot of people's schedules. So definitely go ahead and get those on the calendar sooner rather than later. I would also say, sorry. I would also say if it is built up, just check with your admissions counselor just in case because um, I can't attest to every university here, but I know UAH, we try to fit in as, as much as we can depending on the event. So we have an event this uh, Saturday, which is a preview day, and so registration right now I believe is closed. If any of you are interested, <laughs> let me know, let your counselor know, you know, if you find out that there's a preview day, if you miss the mark, you can reach out and, you know, see if they can take you, right? Because the worst that can happen is, I'm sorry, we're at the city. So I would say, like, don't be afraid to just ask. Also, going along those lines, do the virtual tour before you actually come to campus. Uh, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but the reason why I say that, and I'm gonna use my own school as an example for that. Uh, so if you're not familiar with WKU, we're called the Hilltoppers. Uh, we're the Hilltoppers for a reason. If anybody's been to UT before, you know it's also a hilly campus. Uh, you may not be aware of that before you go to a certain school that your child may be interested in. Uh, my very first uh, week on the job, I was actually doing the tour along with uh, our student tour guides, and we had a mother show up in uh, very, very, very high heels and was very mad at me particularly because I dressed her that way. Uh, so what you guys need to do is look at those events, at, or go to those maps, look at them in advance. Yeah, you might just get a little blurb. Some schools are gonna be more fancy than others, but knowing the terrain, knowing where it is, checking the weather, the little things like that, it just really pays attention. Again, what kind of always said comes down to is just plan in advance and know what you're actually getting yourself into. Carly, you had a question? My only experience applying for college with my stepchildren was during the thick of COVID years, and I just heard two things that I've not heard before, admitted students day, and then preview day. Are there any other secret days that we don't know about? <laughs> um, there are scholars days okay. uh, for students that, that maybe have applied and they might receive some of the, the larger scholarships. Um, so we have like Capstone Scholars Day, that would be one. Um, admitted Tide Days, those are Admitted Student Days, and then University Days, those will be our open house days. Uh, we also have days that are more focused on diversity. So typically all of these different you know, days, or the secret days, um, they'll, they will be on a visit campus um, site for the most part. Also, have your students sign up for our mailing lists and actually read the emails because we send out invitations y'all we send out an invitation to our um, admitted tide days in uh december and in march you know well i guess what are we mid-february late february you know i'm having a student email me right now oh i just read my email i really want to come to y'all's march event and that's been full since january um, so that happens a lot. So have students sign up for our mailing list because we do send out invitations to these events. Um, but check that email and maybe make a dedicated email account just yes. to college information. Yes. So you're not getting, you know, the sale at Target or whatever, you know, and all these ads coming in because um, that'll help you keep everything organized. And maybe it's an email address that the family checks. Mm -hmm. um, because we, we inform students about this. We want you on campus, but um, Again, just getting getting that in there early. But yes, so many days. Diversity, scholars days, university days, admitted days, all of those. Got it. I'm, I'm sorry. This is, no, we can do it. I know we do. <laughs> and going off of mailing, a lot of those mailing lists you can reply back to. And I have a lot of students that have no idea. We send out, I send out one or two text messages a week or every other week and emails. And a lot of students have no idea that they can reply back with those questions. Please reply back if you've got a question and you want it in writing so that you remember the majority, at least for us, any email that we send out to you, you can reply and it will more than likely get sent back to your admissions counselor so that they can talk to you. And so it is always, we want to be as accessible as possible. 
I would also say it just depends on the event as well as the capacity because I know at UAH we have some events that are a little bit harder to get into like once capacity is met we can't waiver on that um, so you know just kind of be mindful of the events and if you have questions about the events let your admissions counselor know we can give you kind of a highlight of what the day would entail. So I have a sophomore son, so I'm brand new to the process. So I'm hearing a lot of, you know, we fill up, plan ahead. So, and I know it's different at every university, obviously, but what's the lead time that we need to think about just for like a personalized visit versus these special days? Do, do you have like a, like just a roundabout time frame, two month lead time? It's gonna depend on the time of year. Okay, so like fall, for example, fall is everybody busy. wants to come. It's fall, fall is you know. busy, yeah. and Mondays and Fridays are the most busy. Okay. Those will book the quickest. Okay. Um, right around spring break is very busy, okay. and so um, any holidays, President's Day, mm -hmm. you know, we just have that. Those days are the days that you think you want to visit campus, or the days everyone else wants. Right. To visit. <laughs> right. right. So um, okay. I I try to have my families give me a minimum of two weeks to plan that full in-depth visit. Okay. Again, I'm reaching out to professors. I'm reaching out to Honors College Greek ambassadors. So a minimum of two weeks. Okay. If we um, if it's going to be one of the open house days, mm -hmm. when you receive that email. Mm -hmm. RSVP if you can, okay. um, because these these invitations are going out to thousands of students, right, right, right. and and um, and they're popular days. They're fun. They're yeah. great. They're so informative, and you're going to meet students from all over the country. Mm -hmm. They're super cool days that I highly recommend checking out. But you do just have to jump on it pretty okay. quickly um, for a campus tour, just a general campus tour that I believe you can typically just sign up online. If you are passing through town and you see that there's an available spot jump on it, reserve it, because that's going to be your campus tour that is going to be pretty much the same for all of the tours that happen throughout the week. So sometimes you can get lucky and look up on a tour that might happen in a couple of days. Okay. But if you do want that in-depth visit, I would say a minimum of two weeks. And also looking at the larger scale of planning, I would really encourage you to use your college planning dates in their junior year, especially the spring of their junior year, and get a really wide scope of schools that they are interested in. And then the fall of their senior year, really narrow that down. Uh, because our applications open August 1st, and our guaranteed freshman scholarships end December 1st. And our scholarships are pretty much cut in half after that point, after December 1st, if their application is not done. And so that's why I would say really get a big, a, as wide of a scope as you want for your student and your student desires their junior year, and then really narrow it down that senior year, just looking at planning. Because our college visits are very easy to attend. I mean, we typically, those college visits, you walk in, we'll take you. It's not, we don't have as much of a cap. And preview day, you walk in, we'll take you more than likely. Um, different events for scholars, for those types of things, there is a cap, it is typically invitation only, but really, again, kind of start big and then end up small during that senior year. I want to say one more thing about the previous question about there's all these different types of days, like there's preview day, there's junior day, there's admitted student day, da, 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 da. there's all these different types of campus visits. I want to say that there's a different purpose for each of them. So it's not just the same thing over and over and over again. And one thing that I would kindly ask parents is to trust us with those days. Um, because like right now, we're all of us are about to have admitted student days. So that's what, you know, a lot of the conversations I'm having with parents right now, well, we don't do tours on admitted student days. A lot of that is because we, we usually expect that students have already visited campus before. And so sometimes there will be a parent who's a little frustrated about that. He's like, well, we want to see around campus. And um, we totally get that, but we also, you know, we want to devote, if we only have a couple of hours with you, admitted student day is for you to get to know professors, for you to get to know other students, for you to get to see the labs you're going to be in, and um, all these different things. So, um, you know, really trust us with those days that we're trying to accomplish as much as we can in the most efficient way that we possibly can. And so, if you are wanting something, um, some experience for a campus visit, and you find out that you're not going to get it on that particular type of day, 
it's totally cool. You can schedule a different type of campus tour. So like for us, for preview day, it's probably like this for most of us sitting at, at this table. You know, our preview days are gonna be like a 30,000 foot view. Um, and so it's really cool. You get the rah, rah, rah. It's great for the beginning of a college search. Um, but if you're wanting to have a sit down, one-on-one -on -one meeting with a professor, it's not really going to be scheduled into that day and it's not the day to ask because there's probably about a thousand people visiting campus that day and so um, you know really trust that those big days are for those really zoomed out views and then I would just say and I can only speak for Tennessee Tech and how our campus visits are those personalized we call them VIP campus tours they're going to be a lot smaller you have a one-on-one -on -one tour with a student tour guide mounted group and then you have that that departmental meeting those are awesome if any student at any in any grade can go on one of those one time I did one with a second grader it was so fun <laughs> but those are best for students who have a little bit more of an idea of maybe what they want to study so it can be overwhelming for a student who might be a sophomore and is like I I've got no clue what I want to major in because you know we're talking about like you know differential equations classes do you want to go and sit in on one and it might be just a little bit overwhelming for them so kind of you know an appropriate timeline when it comes to first of all there's never it's not too early it's never too early to start looking at colleges maybe start with those kind of bigger picture more zoomed out 30,000 foot view preview days and then as you narrow down your college search you know then start to you know get that more and more personalized experience um, but yes, please trust us. Also, I kind of want to add going off of that, uh, of course, I know Ole Miss is about four hours out from Nashville, so it's not something that you can just kind of like drive to in an afternoon without kind of having a planned visit. With those larger preview days or our fall visit days, we cannot really accommodate personal one-on-one -on -one. Um, like professor chats or in classroom chats during that time frame just because there's so much kind of going on on campus. So if that is something that your child wants to do, make sure to kind of plan ahead so that you can do your pretty day, come back in the fall, um, and kind of have that classroom experience at that time. So just kind of, you know, keep that. And I don't know about for everybody else, speaking for myself, that's kind of how Ole Miss tends to do all of those things.